What's up everyone, it is Garrett and welcome back to my channel. Now today is special, today we're uploading another portfolio reviews video. Now if you guys are new to the channel and you're new to me, this video series is basically me going over three portfolios every week, reviewing them, talking about a general topic between all of them, and then also helping out everyone by critiquing them live on a video. Now, if you want to submit your portfolios, I am doing it a new way this time. There's going to be a link in the description below to a Discord chat. Basically, what you have to do is click on that Discord link and then join my server. Inside my server, there's going to be a text channel called Portfolio Reviews. All you have to do is submit your portfolios through there and I'll go through it every single week and then you guys can get in. Now I do want to say if you guys did get into the portfolio reviews, I would definitely recommend you guys telling your friends to submit their portfolios, but definitely don't do it more than once just because I want a lot of other people to kind of have a chance of getting into it. But uh, that's basically all the news, so definitely go submit your portfolio right away and uh, let's get right into the video. All right, we are on my computer right now. I'm going to go over these portfolios. But first things first, I want to show you guys how you're going to be able to submit your portfolios just to clarify any questions. So when you join the Discord link, you're going to get into my chat called Garrett's Design Chat. In the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see portfolio reviews and then weekly submissions. Basically, just submit your portfolio like these people did. And you guys have just the same amount of chance of getting in as they did. So getting to the first portfolio, we have Philippe Carlson. And I'm going to just basically say I apologize in advance for butchering people's names. It's just super hard to pronounce names, especially people from like Sweden and France and all these other um, foreign countries because in America, everything's pronounced a lot differently than it is obviously in different countries. So first things first is definitely going to be the presentation that I get from it. Now, I do not like these black thumbnails whatsoever but what i do want to touch upon is the profile picture and this is going to go for everyone watching this video right now if you're having a profile picture that's just an icon of some sort please go change it to something more personal i can't help you enough how much more a client is um kind of about to come to you because you have a profile picture of yourself if like you're posted up next to a car with your pants down on the ground and like just like thugging it out then you're not gonna be able to get the uh the client but if you know what i mean like a nice professional profile picture that's a lot easier for a client to come to you so that's what i want you to do i want you to change that icon that you have for your profile picture go change it to something more personal and trust me 10 out of 10 it's gonna help so much more so getting into the portfolio really quickly i do want to touch upon two things in this portfolio specifically the first thing is going to be the advertisements now, when I first clicked on this, I definitely had a lot of things come to mind. And the first thing that came to my mind was Call of Duty graphics. Now, if you guys are not in the Call of Duty kind of scene, the gaming scene of designers, then this is not going to pertain to you. But for the people that are watching that are, a lot of the times people make the super dark shadows, big grunges, big gradients, and then big glows. And that's kind of how a quote unquote Call of Duty graphics is made. Now personally what I think you know could help this a lot more is taking that gradient away actually making the shadows the uh, the right color now if you guys know shadows are not always black I can see there's like a purple hue to this but even purple wouldn't come out from uh, a pair of shoes like this and uh, I would just try to tone everything down so much more I don't think that all these necessary gradients and drop shadows and super big shadows with magic bullet looks is going to change your work so definitely take a tone back and make sure that you use a nice high quality logo in the background i can see a lot of pixelation coming out from the uh, the top leaves and then of course the font on the bottom i'm pretty sure a lot of us know what kind of shoe this is so it's a little rhetorical in the sense but uh you know it depends on the way you're going to brand this if it's on a poster or whatnot so scrolling down, there's a lot of things that I want to talk about and especially in this video, my video is going to be dedicated to designing for an audience and this is basically what I'm going to go about throughout each portfolio. And you can see in these portfolios, now if you guys, like I said, are in the gaming community, if you guys are into like eSports or you know, any electronic gaming stuff, this is basically going to be very um, eye-catching to you. And the reason behind that is because a lot of us come to these flashy lights and these flashy glows. That's why this does really, really well inside the eSports. So really, really good job. Um, just things that really want to stick out is going to be making sure that this text lines up perfectly with this and if it does then it does which it does which is perfect and making sure little things like this line up perfectly and it goes for everything whether you're going to have that text lined up or you're going to take the end of this p and line it up with the a which you did now if you guys are wondering how i'm doing that it's a plugin called print screen you guys can download it on google chrome 
Now scrolling down even more onto these L7 Esports jerseys, now really quick I want to touch upon is these rings. Now that's definitely a huge thing a lot of people like doing, but what I want to say is you really need to make these seem a part of the, uh, the community, or not excuse me, the community, I'm just using words now, a part of the design. The reason behind that and the way you can do that is, you know, just placing these kind of eclipses around is not really going to be uh, anything special. You know, no one's really going to look at it, anything crazy. Right now, I just see two round circles just placed everywhere. But if you took those and let's just say you made it look like a... Uh, like a little, like, vortex shield is around him or it looked like it was a... Uh, just something different, you know, something like the lights come down, the lights go up. Just something to make these um, little circles seem a part of the design. You really need to focus on doing that, along with the stuff happening everywhere else. You know, this light right here would be shining a little bit of green on the shoulder. I'm sure some of these particles would be in front of the design. So never be afraid to put things above it, but definitely don't over clam it and definitely don't put unnecessary things. Now, I do want to touch upon, of course, is this order now thing. A lot of the times you always want to put that in the center not a lot of people are going to go down through an advertisement and click right here now if you think about it when you as soon as you go on a page you put your mouse right in the middle and you scroll down now if it's ordering out right here i'll click that but all the way over here it's usually not good for the the person viewing and then the last thing i want to touch upon your advertisements is going to be this quality stocks that you use you always want to go find the highest quality stocks of course that's a water png so all you have to do is type in water png on google and you'll find so many more high quality transparent stocks you can see in the background so definitely do some research do some looking around and you'll be able to help out your designs so much more now if you go over to the logos that you have the first thing i want to talk about is just wow they are huge now, a lot of times in logo folios, you really want things to be a lot smaller. The reason behind that is because as soon as we click on a portfolio, we want to be greeted by something that's going to make us want to go through the whole entire thing. Now, if I'm just, you know, shoved right in the face of a big logo, a lot of times I'm not going to scroll down to another big logo. So what I recommend doing is taking this and let's just say this is going to be our open canvas. You only want the logo to be like that big. But you want like the second one, let's just say we're going to put this up a little bit. So if you scroll a little bit, that's a little bit too big. So let's just say you have a logo right here. Now, if you scroll up a little bit, you're going to see that second logo coming down from the bottom and it's going to make the viewer just scroll a little bit more. And then he's going to see the next one and then scroll a little bit more. So that's what I definitely recommend doing is trying to fix this up. Another thing is if you're going to make logos like this, I would always try to make sure everything follows the even lines. What I mean by that is I would definitely try to drop this just down a little bit now that is personal preference but it would just help out the balance of the logo of course the last thing i want to touch upon is right here you can see that a lot of these ends don't meet correctly and you can easily fix that just pop it into illustrator take that pen tool and make sure those lines are even now thank you philippe for submitting your portfolio hopefully you got some good insight on this and if you guys want to submit your portfolio, like I said, there's going to be a Discord link in the description below. Going off of that, we're going to head over to a mascot designer named Malmu. He's from Sweden. Really awesome guy. I've actually had the opportunity to work with him with a lot of my clients. Now, really quickly, I did put this portfolio in just to show you guys what a well-balanced and well-presented or well uh, presented portfolio looks like I am gonna say one thing that I would recommend however this is perfect this is what you guys want to see as soon as you get onto like a dribble account or a portfolio a lot of nice quality work now this is really gonna make a client want to stay here it's gonna make an agency or company want to go through the work want to contact him now if you're going through this and you guys have a portfolio just like this what I definitely recommend doing is heading over to your portfolio and see the way everything's color coordinated and what I mean by that is let me just grab my print screen one more time I'm gonna highlight this and if you guys don't like this let me know in the description below the comments below I think it helps out a lot so you guys can see what I'm thinking in my head so let's just say we have this and you have let's just say black 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 red black black or you know dark 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 red dark 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 whatever what i would recommend doing is trying to make these all dark and then make the next row like all reds now i see you have a lot of red logos but what i recommend doing is let's say do like a row of darks a row of reds a row of oranges or like a row of cool colors warm colors um blues reds purples whatever it is but you definitely want to try to make it seem color coordinated whether you do all darks right here all lights all oranges all blues and that basically is going to make your portfolio just stand out so much more than everyone else's because you put that extra thought in of putting that color coordination throughout everything 
that's just a little recommendation you don't have to take it but like i said guys this is a really good portfolio really well balanced all the mascots are done very beautifully um huge props to him for even doing mascot logos those are definitely a little bit too hard for my brain to handle so thank you Malmu for submitting your portfolio. If you guys want to go check out that, it will be in the description below. And heading over to the last person, we have Abdu. And I'm not going to try to pronounce your name just because I know that I'm not going to get it right. With this portfolio, I decided to go through the advertisements and the sport magazine cover. So clicking onto the advertisements right away is you're going to be granted by this Pepsi advertisement, which is, you know, obviously is not misleading since it is the thumbnail. But really quick, what I want to talk about is a lot of designers don't put the extra thought into this. Now, this is what the topic of designing for an audience is going to come back to. Now, if you guys know Pepsi and you guys know Pepsi advertisements, let me go head over to Google. I can't even type on my keyboard. You know that Pepsi advertisements are very clean. They're very um kind of bold. Nothing too crazy going on. Maybe sometimes they'll put water droplets or sometimes they'll have a little bit of glow. But that's basically a pepsi advertisement now this is for anyone basically anyone in the social places anyone going out to a bar or a cafe now if we type in the good old g fuel advertisement other than mine popping up right here you guys are going to see what i'm talking about you see how much this g fuel is dedicated to gamers it's just bright colors crazy advertisements crazy things going on now this is what's going to go into my designing for an audience now i am going to butcher your pepsi advertisement just for one second i apologize but uh, when you basically do an advertisement, you're basically dedicating that to a certain community, a certain audience. And when you start going into things like this, start adding glows, start adding unnecessary things, then of course it's going to uh, you know take away from the audience. You know, if you look at this advertisement, think if you're 35 years old hanging out with your buddies, you see a Pepsi advertisement like this, are you really gonna want to drink one? You really gotta try to figure out the way you want to market to people. But that's basically all I have to say. Getting into the advertisement really quickly. The first two things I want to talk about is definitely shadows and the background of the clouds. Now, the shadow on the bottom right here, you're not going to see it, but or you might see it depending on the YouTube quality. But right here should be a very hard black line. That's going to be where the Pepsi can touches and then it fades out. Of course, you guys know that, right? That's how shadow works. And you're not going to see that touch right there. And of course, you're going to see the pixelation between the edges of where you cut. So you really need to definitely clean up all that or even blur it out. And then lastly, these clouds behind it, it would just make it a little bit better if you could have taken these clouds and then, you know, faded them out just a little bit more. So it looked like it was a part of the piece or maybe even coming out of the can. It's up to you, but definitely try to make the clouds seem more a part of it. So going down further into the advertisements, this is when stuff's going to come into play of, you know, branding for, um, you know, certain communities, certain audiences. Now, G Fuel is definitely dedicated to the younger audience of maybe between 25 and younger. And really quickly want to talk about, like I said, high quality stocks, HD stocks. You really want to get into finding those and using them and not everything in the background or moving has to have these crazy motion blurs. And of course, lighting, you definitely want to find a certain light source. Even if it's something of the light, let's just say coming overhead and it lights up, you know, just like that. And it's coming from right here, but like, let's just say four feet in front of it. You know, you would see shadows coming from out of there, from over here. Of course, the shadows would be coming off the things, some shadows from those. You know, you would see shadows everywhere and you really lack the, this perspective and the details of the shadows. And like I said, guys, it can make the, all the difference if you start adding a certain amount of shadows. I'll be talking about that later in my videos. But like I said, you know, certain shadows behind fruit, behind the kiwi or behind anything or the limes, you guys will totally understand that it'll help everything so much better. And this goes a part of my high quality stocks as well. I'm sure if you found a nice high quality stock with a transparent background, you could have really made everything seem more together. And it would have made it seem so much more realistic and so much more uh, like clickbaity in, in a sense. But uh, lastly is also you always want to blur out these really hard cut edges that are against like a very soft background. Just a, a little tip. And uh, last things last is going to be right here. This big, bold, blurry background. You can always take that out, man. You know, you never want to just keep placing everything on blurry backgrounds, especially when you put it into a portfolio. That's just a big tip. No client wants to go through a bunch of advertisements with blurry backgrounds, if you know what I mean. 
Now going into the sport magazine cover, now this is going to be the 10 out of 10 of what I mean by audiences. You always want to grab an audience's attention. Um, I don't even look at magazines, but if I saw this, I would know that it's car magazine. I know that if I was going to look at a car magazine, this would be it. It has a person on the front, it has big bold text, it has the sponsors, it has basically everything you need to know about what's going to happen in this magazine. Of course, whoever's driving the car, I'm sure, is going to be right here. Now, that's basically a really, really good um, magazine cover. Now, to help it go even further, if you want to use bold text, you might want to use bold text, especially on the edition of what's coming out. And lastly, to talk about, you know, helping it out a little bit more is going to be the basically the way everything goes, the shadows, the perspective. Now, even when you use 2D design, of course, you're going to need some type of shadows and perspective. You can see that with the of and the everything is going this way all these dark drop shadows but with the frederick um asbo guy all the shadows are going this way now if you can just change those like even take the the stuff and put it that way it would just make it seem so much better so much more uh thought out and of course making sure that you know everything is high quality i can see a little bit issues throughout like the barcode that the quality got definitely taken off when you probably made it bigger but other than that, the mock-ups are great, the portfolio is great, the Behance is great, and I'm just super stoked that you even submitted this. And like I said, guys, if you want to submit your portfolios for the next weeks, all you have to do is click the Discord link in the description below. Join the Discord, click on the Portfolio Reviews section, the weekly submissions, and pop your portfolio in there, and you'll be good to go. Thank you guys for checking out the video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for all the support and I hope to get YouTube back going full time and I hope to go cranking, especially when I move to Philadelphia. But a lot more news on that. If you guys have any video suggestions, let me know in the comments below, of course, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.